Welcome back to Virginia This Morning, live on CBS 6. If you love military history, you will want to plan a visit to the U.S. Army Quartermaster Museum at Fort Lee in Prince George County, one of the largest Army museums in the country. The story of the Quartermaster Corps' role in Army success since the 1700s is here with over 30,000 artifacts. Jessica is going to take us for a tour. Take a look. This segment is sponsored by Petersburg Area Regional Tourism. Love happens in the best part of Virginia. Now's a great time to plan your day away to the nation's third largest Army Museum here on the base of Fort Lee. The United States Army Quartermaster Museum is an excellent collection. Corey Twilley takes us for a look. We are the third largest United States Army Museum here in the world. We have a massive collection. We have an amazing collection. So we've designed this museum to take everybody on a journey through the history of the Quartermaster Corps. Today, you can come through here, you can see examples of all of these uniforms, amazing examples uh, from the 1830s all the way up through, uh, through modern uniforms. You'll also see the evolution of camouflage. We try to present our material not just as a, as a two-dimensional artifact or things like that, but as an actual display, a uh, three-dimensional display that you can kind of see things in their natural element. This piece right here is a, is a very important piece. It's one of the best best design pieces that the Quartermaster Corps has ever come up with, the DUKW or DUK 353. This thing uh, was designed as one of our first amphibious vehicles. From conception until production was only nine months. The history of Army food, uh, of course, begins with our inception. As soon as we are created, we have, we're developed by the Quartermaster Corps. The Jeep and every Jeep that's come after that uh, has, has evolved from that Quartermaster Corps specification. This piece is actually Patton's primary Jeep that he used during World War II. I would be remiss if I didn't show you all this piece right here. This is actually one of Eisenhower's living quarters. There were four of these that were designed and, and built for, uh, for General Eisenhower. This is his personal living quarters, one of those four. It's the only one that still exists. This has been completely restored back to the way it looked in the 1940s. This is kind of like one of your first RVs. One of our missions here on Fort Lee is to also train all of what we call our riggers. These are the, uh, the, the soldiers that pack and prepare parachutes uh, and a lot of the items that we air, aerial deliver. We deliver these things via aircraft, helicopter, all that stuff. So we do all that training here. So we, we touch on that aspect of, uh, of our history as well. This is the very first federal government produced 50 star flag. Uh, now who would be important enough to get something like this but the President of the United States. In fact, this piece uh, sat in the Oval Office. Uh, it was uncased for the very first time by President Eisenhower himself. This is Ulysses S. Grant's saddle. This is the saddle that he used during the Civil War. When we got into the, uh, the recent wars, especially the, the war in Afghanistan, we realized that the only way that we could supply a lot of these soldiers in the, in the special forces that were fighting up in the mountains of Afghanistan uh, was the same way that we've been doing it for the last 150 years. So what we did was we took the, the pack saddles that we had developed in the past and a Special Operations Command basically took those, studied them, and put them back into production. And we developed our first major saddles since, since World War II. So George Watson was a laundry specialist during, uh, during World War II. Uh, he was serving on an army transport ship and a ship came under attack uh, by the Japanese and unfortunately the ship took several torpedoes. It eventually sank. Uh, as it was sinking, uh, Private Watson, who was a, a fairly exceptional swimmer, swam back to rescue one of his, uh, his crewmates. And then as, as he brought them to safety, he realized there were more in the water. So he swam back out to rescue another. He made that trip nine times. He uh, saved nine different lives, and on his 10th try uh, to go back and save another crew member, uh, he was actually pulled down with the ship and, and passed away. In 1997, uh, President Clinton awards the, uh, the Medal of Honor to Private Watson for his, for his heroic actions. This is only a third of the collection. We actually maintain over 30,000 three-dimensional objects here and, and almost about 250,000 documents and photographs. The United States Army Quartermaster Museum is nothing short of outstanding. With an extensive collection of national treasures, it's a must-see. Start planning your day away. Visit bestpartva.org. The U.S. Quartermaster Museum in Prince George County, you can visit for free. The U.S. Army Women's Museum is right next door. 
For more information, just visit bestpartva.org or call 804-861-1666. That was really something, Jess. It really is, Deborah. It's an incredible stop uh, right there on the base at, at uh, Fort Lee. And you, you may have noticed my hair was considerably shorter in that piece. We recorded that visit probably more than a year ago at this point. Um, the museum had closed uh, and was, was, was waiting to reopen, ready to reopen. And of course that took some time. They are reopened now. You can go and visit. The only day that they are closed is Sundays. So I'm seeing hours Monday through Friday and of course on Saturday. So anybody who has plans to wanna go out on a field trip, it's a great stop. It is incredible, Deborah, because if you're into to military history and, and, and the military component of that, there's so much to see and experience. If you're just a fan of seeing a collection of collections, they have so many pieces at Quartermaster Museum. It really is incredible. It looks like it's a lot to take in. Can you do it all in one visit, you think? I think you definitely can get a lay of the land in one visit, but you're gonna have different areas that pique your interest so you can go back and learn more. The Eisenhower um, bus that's there, I mean, it's large enough Mm -hmm. to house this bus trailer inside. That in and of itself, the detail on that trailer is just fascinating to me. So great question. You could go and get a lay of the land, but go back again and again and really enjoy it. Love it, love it. Absolutely. Great visit. Bestpartva.org is the spot to go to learn more. Stay tuned. Everywhere you are is coming up in less than three minutes. We sure hope to see you on the other side of this short break.